Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's the last shoot of the day. You don't know what that means, but for me and George, it's the big hurrah, isn't it? Today, we're making stuffed chicken over a piece of like grilled sourdough. Gonna make a little pan sauce. And we're not doing any sides because when chicken's that good, you don't need sides, you get me? So, what we're going to do is we're going to make a little stuffing that's gonna go inside our beautiful, delicious Labour Anglais chicken, which is like top tier, that's like the Bugatti of the chicken world, yeah? So here I have 250 grams of sheep's ricotta. You can use normal ricotta. I just like the twang that you get off sheep's ricotta, right? So, ricotta goes in. And then here, just got some nice thyme. Take off the stalks and then rub through my hands just so it breaks down ever so slightly. So they haven't got loads of stalk. Nice bit of thyme. It's got like that fragrance, floral, almost like clean, soapy kind of vibe. Just like so. And then we want to go in with a nice big crack of salt. And then a nice crack of freshly ground black pepper, right? Now, normally I'd add lemon zest to this, but I don't have a lemon because I used them all for the last recipe. So I've only got a lime. And I guess cooking's about adapting. So I'm gonna go to zest of a lime. Get that in. So now we've got like clean ricotta, floral thyme, salt and pepper, just to know that everything's there. A little bit of like citrus from our lime. I'm gonna give this a mix and then a taste and just make sure we've got enough of everything inside it, right? little taste. I need more time. My salt's good. Pepper's all right as well. A little bit of acidity from lime. But we're just gonna go in with some time, right? Just beautifully seasoned ricotta. Fresh, citrusy, zingy. That's something a little different for a roast chicken, do you know what I mean? Like, we all just eat fucking roast chickens. Um, I'm going to get this into a piping bag, just to make it easier to get under the chicken skin. So you could add a little bit of parmesan into this if you wanted, lemons, sage, rosemary, anything herby and woody that's like, can stand up to cooking, feel free to go in. I also used to make this with like enduya inside the ricotta, or dried mushrooms, dried porcini, it makes a good filling. But yeah, anyway, this is what we're doing today. So, that's into a piping bag. Just wanna scrape it down so that everything's down at the bottom where we need it. And then give it the old spinneroo and tie a knot. Piping bag, yeah? So, filling's done. Let's talk about birds, right? So this, it's half a chicken from Labour Longley, right? So no breastbone, no thigh bone, no drumstick. All the bones are out except for the wings, yeah? Right, in here, we've got our skin and where our chicken sits in it. Now, if you pull it away ever so slightly, look, here we've got a pocket, yeah? So we've now got the ability to stuff in here our season ricotta, right? I'm gonna stuff it in, give it a pat down. Now, you don't want to break the skin. You don't want any of the ricotta on the outside. Just wants to sit underneath it nicely, yeah? So we're gonna do the same on the breast side. Now, the breast side has a bigger pocket for us to get more of our filling in. So I'm gonna go right in the top and just pipe like that, yeah? And then as this end, Give it a little press down. Then, what you want to do, is you want to get a frying pan on. Again, high heat. Always need to be working with hot pans. Don't ever let anyone tell you, oh yeah, cold pan, bring it up, it's bullshit. In kitchens, the one thing we've always got during service is hot pans, right? So pans on. Gonna go a decent amount of olive oil. And now we're gonna season, right? 
So I know we've seasoned our mix, but we need to make sure that our chicken's seasoned too, yeah? The most important part is seasoning. We need to know what we're eating, what it tastes like. And that is what salt's used for, yeah? So I'm not putting any oil on the skin or anything like that, only oil in the pan. Want a nice dry skin for this, because what we want to do is render all the fat out of this chicken skin, make it go nice and crispy, and then we're going to fry a piece of bread in that chicken fat for like extra je ne sais quoi, you know, once. So, please do this with a decent chicken. Go to a butcher. Um, if you want to use the same chicken I use, go to Turner and George, ask for a label on Glay. Um, organic, free range, UK. I've been to the farm. Those chickens, yeah, live the best life possible, bro. Like, when I mean acres of space for these chickens to just run around, they're not in little coops. The, and like, you can taste that they're looked after and well loved, you know what I mean? Like, that sounds weird, but all those people worry about is rearing good chickens. And that's what they do, and that's why they're so expensive, to be honest. But just buy a good quality bird, yeah? Thanks. So now, I've got too much olive oil in this pan. So I'm just going to fuck a bit off. So now loads of smoke in here. Um, I got rid of my excess oil in the barbecue. And I didn't know the barbecue was that hot, so we've now got a little smoke situation. But it adds to the atmosphere, you see? Like gorillas in the mist, this is like the last shoot. We're going to have nice beautiful shots of like smoke coming through even though we're cooking on a pan. So, pan's up to heat. I'm just going to add my chicken, yeah? While the chicken's frying, just gonna add in a few sticks of rosemary. Just a little, another little flavor. A couple sticks of rosemary. Right, because I've been touching chicken, I have to go and wash my hands. So I'm going to wash my hands, right? I'll be back to do some other bits and bobs. Do you think if Bourdain was alive, he'd watch our show? I think he would. The idea of pan frying and then going into the oven is that we establish like a really crispy skin and we allow like the fat to render out of the skin. We don't really get that intense heat and contact when like oven cooking. So I want to start it in a pan and then finish it in the oven and bring up all those flavors together. And also to pan fry a piece of chicken that big is going to take all day. You're sacrificing how good it is. You're going to turn it over and then the bottom side of that piece of chicken is going to cook and start to crisp and it's not going to be the right texture. I want it to be crisp and then like clean chicken, right? Now, I reckon this is at a point where we can start, look, look at that. Nice and crispy, right? Smells of like rosemary in the air. Now, we're not going to turn this over. What we're going to do is that we're going to keep it skin side down but we're just going to get it onto a tray, yeah? Take the bits of rosemary out. Now, I'm going to stick this in the oven. The way we're taught to cook in restaurants is put it in the oven on the hottest temperature possible, right? So my oven's at 200 degrees. I'm going to stick it in for I'd say anywhere between 15 and 20. We're gonna rest it, and then we're just gonna carve. So I'm gonna take this, run this into the oven. I'll be back when it's done. It's an entanglement over there, bro. I can't get up.
chicken's gone in the oven. My pan's still on, right? I'm going to cut. I'm going to go this way because my pan's not very big. I've just got this nice bit of like malt sour loaf from... Sour loaf? Sourdough. From that place where people dress like liberal... Um, they work in labs on Essex Road. What's it called? They sell cheese. Neil's Yard. Neil's Yard. This bread's from Neil's Yard, yeah? Um... I'm trying to cut a piece that isn't doesn't look like someone's cut it with their eyes closed, and I'm fucking, so using a fucking yeah, a sharp Japanese knife. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, I cut the bread. Yeah. Now what we're gonna do? We're just gonna fry this piece of bread in like this olive oil and this chicken fat, nice and gentle. Yeah, nothing hard, just gentle, gentle. We want it to go crispy, soak up all the chicken juices. Like, things like this are just extra bits of flavour that you've got for free. This is like a byproduct. So we're just going to let this fry up. It's still got the bits of chicken fat. There's little bits of rosemary knocking about in it. Just give it a nice gentle toast. Look at that. Chicken fat, olive oil, rosemary, drippy, dancing fat. Turn it over, let the other side do the rest of the soaking. Now, I don't want to cook this until it's like fucking cardboard, store-bought crouton that like break your teeth. I just want it to soak up all the juices and warm through, yeah? That chicken's only going to roast for about 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 minutes. Because it's got no bones in it, we're just waiting for the meat to cook. When meat's on the bone, you have to wait for the bone to come up to temperature in order to cook the meat around it. Where all the bones are out, it's just gonna cook all the way through. Our toast's done. I'm just gonna plonk it on the plate we're gonna serve on. Just let it rest a little. And I'm just gonna give the pan a little wipe out. So the flavor's still in the pan, but I don't want like bits and pieces floating in. So, pan's on, back on a high heat. And we're going to make like a little pan sauce with all the flavours that's left, right? So I've got a little bit of Madeira here, which is like a sweet wine, fortified wine, port, I don't know. Um, it's things that old people drink, but makes really good sauce, right? Um, originally from Spain. Madeira. <laughs> it could be from anywhere. If you know where Madeira's from, tell us, please. So look, Madeira. Nice and sweet. It's gonna go into this pan. Motherfucker. Right, Madeira's in, burnt all the hairs on my arm. And then we're gonna go in. Get some chicken stock. That I just bought at the butchers. I normally have chicken stock in the freezer, I don't at the minute. Um, but the butcher stuff's just as good. Madeira's in, burnt my hand. Put the chicken stock in and then we're going to allow this to come all the way down until it's like glossy and viscous and syrupy to coat our beautifully cooked chicken. So look, this was 18 minutes in a hot oven, yeah? Nice little bounce, we've got juices flowing. I can tell by touch that it's cooked. We're just going to rest it. That's my timer going off. We're just going to rest it. We're going to flip it and rest it. We don't want it to rest on the crispy skin. We're going to flip it, rest it, carve it, stick it down. Sauce we're going to finish in a second. I've just flipped my chicken over so that we can keep the skin nice and crispy, golden brown, and we're going to let it rest. Now, when I first took it out of the oven, there was a little bit of a bounce, right? And as it rests, the bounce has tightened up. So I know that it's still cooking on the inside. The fire don't worry about too much. As long as the breast is cooked beautifully, the fire will be too. Um, if you get to a point where your fire's overcooked, the breast is fucking long cooked, ruined, sawdust, shite. Um, just let this do its thing. The last thing I wanna do is any bits of these like resting juices, I just want to go in the pan, into the sauce. Yeah? Just like that. Just another bit of added flavour. 
The last thing I want to do is I just want to add a little knob of butter to this sauce, right? And I just want to make it extra silky. And just let it cut through the bitterness of this sauce, right? It'll come up in color and as it slowly just melts in, just to give it that extra bit of like luxury, posh gravy. And then we're gonna carve up our chicken. So, got my chicken here. I'm just gonna cut it down the middle to take the fire and the breast away from each other. Look at that, man. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful bits of roasted chicken. Ricotta cutting through it. Look. Come on, man. I'm gonna plonk that on this bit of bread. Carve up our breast. It's so important that you buy a nice chicken. Now this piece of breast can go on the bread. <laughs> Stick another bit of breast on top. And then we're just gonna go on with this beautiful Madeira sauce over the top. It's thick, it's delicious. Where it's so cold out, unfortunately my plate's not warm, so my sauce is gonna tighten up on the bottom of the plate. But that's it, ladies and gents. Pan roast chicken, Madeira sauce, Piece of toast. Done. Sundays. You get me? Let's eat it. Nice little alternative for a Sunday roast. You can make a little sauce, stuff a chicken, roast it, stick a couple of veg on. Job is a good one. For those of you that make like Bisto gravy, next time you roast the chicken, just do this. Keep the juices to so the same pan, Madeira, chicken stock, reduce butter. And you'll have a gravy better than anything you've ever made or anything that's come out of a pot. It's just such a French, typical way of making a pan sauce. You can do it with white wine, it doesn't have to be Madeira, you can do it with port, you can do it with red wine. Same principles apply. It'll be the best sauce you've ever made. It's such a beautiful chicken, man. It's what chicken should taste like. You know, good chickens, they have flavor. Normal everyday birds just don't bring anything, man. And like, we're all so used to eating chicken all the time that it's just like, oh, chicken again. When you get a nice chicken, bro, you remember what chicken's really about, innit? Lovely. The ricotta gives you like a cleanness. There's like acid from the lime. There's like big hits of thyme. This changes the flavor profiles ever so slightly. Every time you take a different bite, it's a little something different. And where the ricotta's baked, it's like lost all of its moisture and becomes like this dense, chewy, cheesy, delicious blanket of like goodness but yeah man the ricotta bangs the whole thing bangs sunday roast is done different isn't it thanks for watching i've been your boy big Hass. this has been my back garden thank you thank you thank you love I'm Big Hass. Uh, George has moaned all day. I've been, I'm cold. The camera's really heavy. I'm cold. <laughs>